I was reading on Softpedia that the developer of Pingai OS, Anthony Norman, is thinking of pulling the plug on the project. Now it's been a long time since I last looked at Pingai OS, and uh, to be honest, I didn't do the best review. In fact, hold my hands up, yeah, it wasn't that good, and I ended up pulling the video. It hit about 700 views, and I just decided, yeah, let's get rid of it. I missed uh, quite a few features of the OS. Now, as uh, Anthony kept reminding me from that point on, every time I saw him in a mumble chat, that, yeah, I missed some of the features out. Okay, tell me once, fair enough. But it got a bit annoying after a few times. And it's part of that reason I never went back to look at Pingai OS again. Now, there was also another incident with uh, another YouTube content creator regarding this operating system and fallout within what was said. Now, I'm not going to name names. I won't kick the man while he is down. But if you've read the story or know of it, and it is around still on uh, online news articles, all I can say is you can't take to heart what people say. If one person criticises what you do, you can't just focus on that one piece of criticism. If a lot of people like what you do, take that on board. Sure, if a lot of people start criticising you, then you have to listen. But hey, look, I get a load of comments all the time. Abusive comments and a lot of positive comments. You just have to ignore the abusive ones. But anyway, that aside, what I was thinking about is how do you get funding for a Linux operating system when there is so many choices of distros out there? Well, there is the support model, like Red Hat do, where they sell the support for the operating system. Or you could have funding from a South African multi-millionaire, like Ubuntu have. But in fact, Ubuntu also sells support to OEMs who are pre-installing Ubuntu on their devices and mobile phones. Also, Google do a similar thing with Android, where they're selling support to the OEMs. But what of the average Linux distribution? Well, then it gets more difficult. Now, I saw on the website, which I'm not showing this video due to the aforementioned issues with the YouTubers, that there is a mention of how much funding that Antony has received through ad revenue, and it looks like he's averaging just below one pound per day. Okay, maybe 300 pounds per year. Well, I could see that covers the cost of a web server, but not of the work that goes into the project. So I can appreciate it, it's quite a lot, and that's what it's saying here. It's just become a financial black hole. It's not being self-funded, and... You know, you've got to appreciate people's time is worth money. We have a limited amount of time on the world. We've got to make something of it, really. And developers have to eat, got bills to pay, rent, mortgage. You know, there's a lot, and it must be difficult to get that from an open source project. And there's another project that Antonio's worked on here, Pingai Builder, a remaster sys alternative helps users create their own Ubuntu-based Pingai OS flavour, hmm. which apparently could not help the project from sinking. To be honest, I'm not surprised, because who are the people that are going to use that? Other people that are creating their own Linux distro of a few themes and different backgrounds? Well, yeah, they're not going to really provide funding. So I can understand what Antonio is doing making one last ditch effort to keep the project alive. If you're looking at the death of something, you can either sit there, let it go, or you can make an announcement and try and reignite the project. This is what he is doing here, giving it one last go. Will it succeed? Well, only time will tell. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.